Mmm, it's an orange juice. The new card is going to cost three elixir, spawn two wallbreakers, and each of them are going to deal 400 damage only targeting buildings. They have 275 health and have very fast move speed. Think fast like Ice Spirit. Because they do cost three elixir, fireballing them is not a bad idea if planted behind the prince's tower for some tower value. But they are splittable, so there isn't value fireballing one wall breaker, especially because a lone wall breaker won't make it to your tower. So if you do split them, you have to choose what side to tank, or even tank for both of them. This could be in the split lane archetype, potentially. Naked wall breakers would result in only one of them making it to the tower. Pairing it with an ice spirit or even a zap would result in both connecting. Because their move speed is very fast, kiting them is not feasible unless you're kiting something that is the same speed. If your opponent's prince's tower is down and you know they have a defensive building planted in the center to pull your giant, you could drop the kamikaze specialists to destroy them. They have the ability to splash onto surrounding troops but only when exploding. Remember, they don't explode upon death like the golem does. They can only splash onto ground troops. Don't want to put any ground troops in between a building that the wall breakers are going to wreck because that's 800 damage. If they're defending with something a little further than touching the building, then tornadoing them into the tower before it blows up will splash onto the troop. This is a bit gimmicky, but it could work very well for a positive elixir break. Basically, if you look at the impact of the explosion, as soon as the wall breaker explodes onto the tower, its area of damage is actually inside the radius of the tower, so anything actually touching the tower is going to get hit. Having Zap paired with your wall breakers versus the tower and even an ice spirit gives your wall breakers a better chance to connect to the tower. If you put Wallbreaker behind an Ice Golem, they will get stuck. It kind of underutilizes their move speed and it puts them at a disadvantage, making them take longer to connect. But it is still very threatening because a tank could ensure that both of them connect left and north. If you put any large tanks in front of the wall breakers, it tries to push the giant and makes them very easy to stop as they stumble left and right, back and forth around the giant, trying to make it through to connect to the tower. Putting them behind a battle ram or a hog is very threatening because they have very fast move speeds and only go for buildings. The hog and the battle ram are also tanking for the wall breakers, so planting defensive buildings to defend the hog is kind of a disadvantage because the wall breakers can immediately destroy that building. Ram Rider would also work, but it's a little expensive for 8 Elixir. On the other hand, if you're defending with the Ram Rider and counter pushing with wall breakers behind it, that's going to be a very scary push because of her snares and dash ram damage. Miner acts as an instant tank to the wall breakers, just like any of the other swarmies, and has very good synergy, especially just because of how it can instantly tank for them. The wall breakers synergize very well with bridge spam archetypes on the whole basis that you cannot ignore any of the units coming by. They're very fast units. They're either dashing, ramming, or exploding at very fast move speeds. Bridge spam alone is all about overwhelming your opponent. Now you can even split your bridge spam. Pairing the wall breakers with rage is insanely scary with their already fast move speed. Raged wall breakers feel as scary as raged minion horde. So, maybe Rage isn't too bad. Well, it still is, so I would rather use a Lumberjack. Center planning them when the Prince's Tower is down is ridiculous. They do not even come close to making it. it the King Tower just stops them completely. Although, if you plant the Ice Spirit one tile down from center plus Wallbreakers second from the river, they will result in both Wallbreakers making it to the tower. Ooh, that is damage! They're extremely easy to block. You can even block them using skeletons. These things are lightweight. If you're facing naked wall breakers, you'll want to plant them in their path to force them to run around your troop. Fire spirits wreck them, and if you plant a reactionary furnace, those two fire spirits are actually going to destroy them. Skeletons can stop them alone when planted in front of your tower, but if you try to plant them further, the wall breakers will run past, and one is going to detonate. Cannon and Tesla will wreck the wall breaker if not tanked for, just because they're so fragile and they take so long to explode once they're in front of the tower. It's like they're just standing there waiting to explode. Ugh! From having buffed their exploding time. Barbarian Hut insanely counters the wall breakers without taking any damage when the barbarians spawn. The barbarian barrel is going to be one of the best defenses against the wall breaker. The barrel itself takes them down to just one hit, even behind a tank. Then the barbarians take care of the wall breakers by finishing them off, if timed correctly and positioned correctly. Remember, timing is key. 
The wall breakers take quite a long time to explode once they reach your town. We found many times where they should have exploded, but the last moment they get wiped by the tower, they just take so long to explode. You'd think maybe you could tank your wall breakers with graveyard, but if you end up with only one shot left, they're gonna stall right at the tower and get sniped at the tower just because the tower is gonna retarget onto them with the skeletons. They're not good tanks. Mega Knight has always been able to destroy units when crossing the bridge. It doesn't even matter if there are tanks in front of the wall breaker. They just disintegrate, they evaporate, they disappear under the Mega Knight. Bowler is another unit that wrecks almost everything ground because the bowler has knockback. Even tanking for the wall breakers is not going to protect them from the gentle purple giant. The only two units in the game that can't stop the wall breaker alone are Ice Spirit and Sparky. Sparky just takes way too long to charge up in time for the super fast wall breakers. Any unit that has splash is super annoying for the wall breakers. They just don't have that much health and because they can't make it too far without a tank in front of them. Anything that generally hits the tank is going to splash onto the wall breakers. Even a lowly witch stops them easily behind a giant. Ugh. All splashers are amazing against them, so always try to carry splashers and maybe even tornado for some insurance if wall breakers happen to be strong. We don't know yet. We're gonna have to see the experiences in the meta. Overall, I think this is a very cool card that just needs a little buff. Maybe they need to explode a little bit faster, a little bit sooner, something like that. But I don't think they need a damage buff. I don't think they need a health buff. Hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more quality OJ.